What's up YouTube? This is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. This is a video about my latest jump training session and I just finished a four-week strength training cycle with some heavy lifting. So now I'm deloading on some speed work and just a couple of squats to help maintain my strength. I'm performing some light snatches to warm up for my working sets which are power snatches. And even though I'll be performing power snatches for my working sets, I still like to go through the full snatch into an overhead squat because it helps maintain my shoulder and hip mobility, uh, maintain core strength, and it's just a good movement to do an overall body warm-up. Usually, I'll just perform two to three repetitions for my warm-up to save my energy for my working sets. Even though I'll be performing mostly strength movements today, such as the squat, leg curl, and calf raises, if you're performing a jump training workout, it's very important to do your explosive movements first, such as your plow metric, so like a box jump or a jump squat. And here I'm performing a snatch, which is my explosive movement. And you want to prioritize that before your strength movements. If you perform your strength first, you're not going to condition your nervous system well enough to be explosive, which is your number one priority, and it's going to be more strength-oriented than it is going to be speed and power-oriented, which is critical for jumping. As you can see, I'm performing power snatches, which is my working set, and I'll be performing three reps for three sets with my five rep max. It's very important that when you are performing snatches and cleans that you do not explode until the bar has passed your knees. Most people explode too early or the bar is too far away from their bodies. Now I'm transitioning into my second exercise, which is the back squat. Even though my body is pretty warm from all the snatches, I still like to perform one light set to work on my technique and to maximize blood flow to prime my body for the heavier sets. Now I'll be performing my working sets, which is three sets of six to eight repetitions at a weight that is around 50 to 60% of my one rep max. My goal for my back squats is to squat low enough where my waist is parallel to the height of my knees before I push off the ground. And my focus is to squeeze my butt on the way up powerfully and push through my heels. Now on to everyone's favorite jumping exercise, the calf raises. Contrary to popular belief, Calves only contribute to a small percentage of your jumping ability and majority of the power comes from your posterior chain and I'll talk about that in a whole nother video. When performing calf raises for jumping purposes, you want to go down slowly to get a full stretch of the calf muscle and the Achilles tendon and then explode up and hold the top for two seconds. The last exercise we will perform is the leg curl. Hamstring and glute development are so critical for improving your jumping ability and injury prevention. The hamstrings are often ignored in the strength development process and as a result people become quad dominant. Static stretching after exercise is the most underrated exercise you can do to improve your health and your athletic performance. There's a reason why professional athletes at all levels perform static stretching after they perform their sport. Make sure you stretch all the muscle groups that you've used during that session and you will see that I target the quadriceps, hamstrings, hip flexor, glutes, and calf muscles for this stretch session. 